Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is currently day 1000 of quarantine and if at this point you're taking four shots of coffee per day just to feel something, no one is judging you honey. Just do what you have to do to cope. So today I'm bringing you a thrift transformation. I thrifted this shirt dress for a dollar. Can you believe it? It was originally a H&M basic piece and I turned it into a bustier dress and look at that dress. Honey, post quarantine, this is attending all the brunches. I'm wearing this to all the brunches, all the cookouts, my sugar daddy's funeral. There's no place I'm not going to wear this dress. Try stop me. And it's super simple to make. It's just very time consuming. And honestly, all you have is time. So grab your sewing supplies and let me show you how to make a cute bustier dress. That way you can attend all your sugar daddy's funerals in style. To start off, I'm going to be using this bodycon dress that I made and I'm going to be using it as a template. I will link the tutorial for the dress down below. So all I'm doing is I'm just flattening her, making sure she's not disagreeing with anyone. She's staying in her place and everyone is respecting her. And once she's nice and flat, I'm just going to outline her shape. That way I have a template to work with and I'll have a beautiful body hugging dress. So I used a bodycon dress, but honestly, you don't have to use a bodycon dress. Just use a dress you love the fit of. I just love figure hugging dresses and that's my thing. If it's not your thing, that's totally fine. Just use what you're comfortable with. This is a DIY, so feel free to customize it to your style. So I outlined the shape on both sides. This is unnecessary as I just folded it in half, but for the sake of this video, I did it anyway. And once I was done, I had a bodycon shape dress template and I just cut her out using a pair of scissors, being careful to to follow the dots that way I had a beautiful dress when I was done so as you can see once I got to the top bit I just turned my dress around and folded it in half that way I'd have a template and this dress would be equal on both sides you don't want one side high up to the heavens and the other side crying not knowing what it's doing so just to ensure symmetry I folded this in half and I'm just going to use one side as a template for the other side so just cut out the shape I was careful to make sure everything was equal and once that was done once you unfold your dress you will have a tube dress kind of situation going on as you're about to see so both sides are cut out and now I'm just going to draw a straight line across the top that way I can make a tube dress and that's going to be the base of our dress today so just draw a straight line, do what you have to do to cope. And after I was satisfied with my line, I just cut through it with a pair of scissors and I had a tube dress. So set aside the top bit, we're going to work, and the back bit, we're going to work on the front piece. This is where the magic happens. This is where the broth becomes a stew. Honestly, that made no sense. But what I'm doing is I'm folding that front piece in half, and I'm pinning the sides together. That way everything is nice and equal. You don't have to pin in place. I just didn't want my fabric moving around as I was cutting. And I measured two centimeters from the folded edge, took a beautiful bra and make sure you use your good bra okay don't use your flaky old bra that you've been wearing for seven years use a good fitting bra and all I'm doing is I'm outlining the shape of one cup and this is super easy to do just follow the cup shape do what you have to do and once you have your outline you can go back in and make sure to fill in those gaps this will just make it easier for you to cut so I recommend doing this that way your curved bit is not wonky and wondering what you did wrong in life so just to make sure she's nice and curvy just outline it and you're just going to cut out the piece once that's done and you have your cup holders literally <laughs> So this is a piece after all that is said and done and now we're going to move on to making the cups that go into the cup holders. So I'm just measuring the length and the width of my bra. I've included the measurements on screen and once I had those two measurements I then proceeded to draw a rectangle and I increased the length by six centimeters to make it 25 centimeters and I increased the width by four centimeters to make it 18 centimeters. So whatever measurements you have just add six and four 
or to the length and width respectively. So I just drew a rectangle and when you're done with a rectangle, you're not going to freestyle a cup shape. So what I'm doing is I'm just freestyling this and I had to go back in several times. You just want to make sure this is as steep as possible. You want to have a lot of fabric in your boob area. That way she's nice and comfortable. You don't want her being squeezed by the fabric. So make sure you're making this super steep. And as you can see, I finally settled on this curve. So just eyeball it. Honestly, there's no formula to this. And once that was done, I'm just cutting out the shape and you will have your cup shape. So just get rid of the excess fabric. You don't need her right now. And you're just going to fold this in half. That way everything is nice and symmetrical. There's some kids yelling in the background. I'm so sorry. So just going to make sure this is symmetrical. And then you're going to cut out the excess bit of fabric. And you will now have your cup shape, which is where your boob is going to make its home. Yes, I went there. And I marked the insides with an eye just to make sure I didn't get the two sides confused. Because that can be annoying. And then I put the two cups together wrong side facing each other I just wanted to make a slanted line at the top so I measured an inch from one corner and joined that corner to the other corner that way I'd have a slight curve to my boob cups honestly this wasn't so noticeable when I was done but hey I think it was a cute little detail and I tried so once everything is cut out you now have a bit of a slant to your cups if you can see that and now we're going to hem the top that way it can look nice and neat you honestly don't have to do this but it just gives your cups a more finished professional look and that's what we're always going for on this channel so moving on to the sewing machine I'm just folding in my fabric once and doing a zigzag stitch along the edge this is super simple to do and I recommend you use a zigzag stitch if your fabric is a knit fabric stretchy you want her to be accommodating to everyone and no one is feeling left out and the zigzag stitch is accommodating so once you've hemmed the top of both cups you're going to cut out a bit of elastic that is the length of the cups you cut out so I'm just measuring a piece of elastic cutting off the excess bit and you will be left with two pieces of elastic so now on my hemmed cups I'm going to mark half an inch from the top and this is where you're going to attach your elastic bits you can vary this measurement and make it longer or shorter if you like it's your world baby and we're just living in it so do whatever you want to do so with that bit of elastic we're now going to sew it from one end to the the other and I'm just pinning it in place just to ground her just to humble her for her to know I'm the boss and she can't do what she likes because elastic will try you okay so you need to keep her in check so you're going to repeat this on both cups obviously that way you have two beautifully ruched cups and as you can see at the start of sewing the elastic I make sure to back stitch and stitch forward a few times and once she's in her place once she's not disrespecting your elders once she's not talking back to you it's now time to test her so you're going to stretch her as much as you can make sure it lays flat on the fabric and only stretch the elastic do not stretch the fabric because this will end up shortening the length and it won't look as nice so just stretch the elastic making sure she's behaving and just sew a zigzag stitch across her just to tame her she's now ready to settle down her days of hoeing around are behind her and she needs to settle down with this fabric so once you you've done that as you can see you have a beautifully ruched piece at the front at the top sorry and it looks so beautiful and fabulous and it stretches what more would you want and after that's done on both cups you're going to sew a basting stitch all around as usual to sew a basting stitch just switch to a straight stitch and increase your length to the longest length minus five always make sure you have a lot of hanging thread that way you have something to pull on when you're ruching and you're basically just going to do a straight stitch all around around do not backstitch because backstitching will ruin your life backstitching is that guy who tells you he loves you but he doesn't really love you and if you backstitch when you're basting you will cry yourself to sleep every night just like you will after that guy dumps you so just sew a straight stitch all around do not backstitch at any point because you want to be able to pull the threads so do what you have to do make sure you sew that thread and when you get to the end do not backstitch I have said that a few times if you end up backstitching this is on you okay now it's time to 
ruche your cup that way she fits nice and snug around your boobs so we are pulling on the top thread here do not pull on the bottom thread unless you want your string to break or if you choose to pull on the bottom thread do not pull on the top thread so choose a struggle okay and you're just going to pull on one thread and pull it and ruche the fabric ruche it to your heart's content make sure everyone is obeying the government everyone is observing the social distancing laws and you'll know to stop your ruching when your cup fits perfectly in your cup holder so just ruche and ruche and ruche and ruche until your cup is the same size as where you're going to attach it so here i am just aligning everything making sure they're perfect for each other and once i've confirmed that it's now time to close off the ends that way your ruching doesn't move about so i'm just making a tiny knot on both sides this way my ruching won't move about and she won't be out here telling everyone my business when i told her things in confidence that she shouldn't be spilling about so so I just tied a knot and then I'm just going to cut off the excess bit of thread and once that's done you're going to repeat this with your second cup and now you have two comfortable cups for your boobs these are homes for your boobs and they're so nice so now it's time to work on the PC cutout so all I'm going to do is I'm going to hem that top bit so a zigzag stitch to make sure she looks nice and neat and now it's time to attach the cups with pins this just helps the sewing process go so much faster so I highly recommend you do this so I'm just aligning the cup with the dress and this time the dress is the wrong way up and they're just going to sew to attach the cups so we're going to move on to the sewing machine and we're going to do a zigzag stitch because that's what you need to use for stretchy fabrics trust me you don't want to use a straight stitch on knit fabrics the straight stitch doesn't care for anyone else she doesn't accommodate stretching whereas the zigzag stitch accommodates everyone she allows people to stretch to their maximum potential so always use zigzags stitches when sewing stretch fabrics it just allows the fabric to stretch that way you won't be crying as you put this dress on so I always make sure to take out the pins before I sew because pins can break your needle and trust me that is the last thing you want so I just sewed a zigzag stitch across that area I'd pinned down and I repeated on both cups and now you have your cups attached to the top of your dress and you are basically almost done with this tutorial so now we're going to work on the back piece super simple you're going to hem the top and I just did this by folding in the fabric once and sewing a zigzag stitch across the bottom edge once I was done my back piece was nice and neat she was now ready to show up and be the star of the show what I'm doing now is I'm putting the back piece right sides kissing with the front piece and I'm just going to pin the sides together that way we can sew everything and this will be a complete dress so I'm just pinning the fabric together making sure everyone is nice and aligned they're perfect for each other they're not going to be driving each other crazy once they been married for a few years so once I pinned both sides I'm now going to sew a zigzag stitch across both sides and you will basically have a dress so moving on to the sewing machine you know the drill make sure you take out your pins because you're a good citizen and you follow the law and you're just going to do a zigzag stitch across the area you pinned down always 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 back stitch when you end and start your sewing I shouldn't have to mention that at this point because this is what prevents your fabric from unraveling so this dress was super tight and this zigzag stitches were put to the test trust me they were fighting for dear life but as I said the zigzag stitch is accommodating and she allows people to be free so always use a zigzag stitch and as you can see she allows her stretch and as I said you basically have your dress at this point so now we're going to move on to making the sleeves for this cute number and all I'm doing is I'm cutting off the sleeves off the shirt so I did this all around just to make sure I was getting sufficient sleeve and once I had done that on both sides, I now had two pieces of sleeve that we're going to finesse to turn into beautiful ruched sleeves. So I just eyeballed a curve. Honestly, this had no formula. I just did not want so much excess fabric at the top of my sleeve. So once I'd eyeballed a curve, I just cut off the excess bit of fabric and you're going to repeat this on the other sleeve. That way they're nice and symmetrical. So get rid of the excess fabric. Use this as a template on your second sleeve. That way everything is nice and equal and your sleeves actually look like sisters honestly my sleeves were not that similar from the back but from the front they looked fine and who's checking the back anyway if you're checking my back you're too close for comfort anyway I digress so what we're going to do is from the bit of fabric we have left I'm going to cut out two rectangular pieces that are eight and a half inches long 
and I'm just going to snip them off. I'm going to use my scissors to do this and you're going to have two rectangular bits. So I wanted to add some pieces to my sleeves, that way they'd be nice and long. And the longer your sleeve, the more ruching you will have. So I ended up with this four pieces. I think they were about an inch each. And I'm just going to attach two pieces to one sleeve. So as you can see, I'm just attaching it to the end of the sleeves. And this would make my sleeves really long, which would create that beautiful ruched effect once we added the elastic. So just going to sew a zigzag stitch to attach these pieces to your sleeves. And once that's done, you have a longer sleeve. Honestly, at this point, I should have let them be that length. I shouldn't have trimmed off the excess length because I thought they'd be too long. But the more fabric you have, the more ruching you will have. So I recommend you leave this long and just ruch a lot more. That way your sleeves are very nice and ruffled. But I ended up cutting off a bit more than I wanted and that's fine. We make mistakes and we learn from them. So I ended up snipping off some excess fabric. Honestly, don't do this. Just use the sleeve as is. And all I'm doing is I'm attaching elastics that are the width of my arm. That way the sleeves stay up and they stay snug and nice on my arm. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the ruching at the top of the cup. I'm just going to backstitch a few times to secure the elastic. And now you're going to pull on the elastic to make sure you're ruching up that sleeve. So really pull on her, really test her, see if she'll tell the police that you are the one who killed your sugar daddy. Really, really put her through it and stretch the fabric and sew a zigzag stitch across the elastic. This will gather your fabric and at the same time create a sleeve that will fit nice and snug around your arm. And you're going to do this at the top and bottom of your sleeve, that way you have a nicely ruched sleeve. And now you're going to put this right sides together, that way you can sew on the inside and your sleeve will be closed. So I just did a zigzag stitch across that point, nothing fancy, super simple to do. Just do your zigzag stitch, take your time, think about how bomb you're going to look at those cookouts with this dress, and always backstitch because if you do not backstitch, you're the kind of person who walks slow in public and you deserve to be... I'm not gonna say it, but yeah, you deserve a lot of bad things. So now it's time to attach the sleeves to your dress and I just marked one and a half inches from the top edge. I then made a very small curve. I wanted the sleeves to be securely attached. You could just attach them without cutting off any fabric, but I wanted to do it different this time. So I'm just drawing a tiny little curve on both sides and then cutting off the excess bit of fabric. And once I'd done that on both sides, it was now time to attach my sleeves. So make sure you're aligning the seams, that way everything is nice and even. And you're just going to pin this in place, that way sewing is a breeze. I don't understand why children are screaming outside, they should be quietening. Anyway, I'm just pinning the sleeve to my dress all around, and this is super simple to do. And once everything is nice and pinned, you're now going to sew across the pinned edge. I was just straightening things out a bit, so you're just going to sew across this edge and this will attach your sleeve to your dress and as you can see they're now securely attached I used a zigzag stitch in case you're wondering and this is the final bit this is not necessary I just wanted a bit of pizzazz added to my dress so all I'm doing is from the remaining fabric I'm cutting out an inch strip of fabric and what you're going to do with this inch of fabric is you're going to make a tie that makes a pretty bow so you're just going to fold it in half and sew on one side the strap is the wrong way out so you are going to turn this around and all I'm doing is I'm sewing a zigzag stitch across the edge I just folded it in half and made sure she was laying flat and then sewed a zigzag stitch across one edge this was really easy to do, honestly it took no time at all, and once you're done sewing, this is what your strap looks like. As you can see, the zigzag stitch is on one edge. So now it's time to use this handy dandy tool called a loop turner. You're going to use it to turn this the right way out. I highly recommend this loop turner. Since she came into my life, my relationships have been working out. She has made all the difference in my life, so I highly recommend her. So all I'm doing is I'm just using it to turn this the right way around. So I'm just going to grab a piece of fabric with a hook at the top. As you can see, that's a bit of fabric. It's very small, but that's what you need to do to make this work. And then I'm going to close that hook and I'm going to turn the strap within itself. So this does take a bit of finessing. You need to know people, talk to the right people. That way the right things can happen to you. But with a bit of finessing, you will have this down. So just pull the fabric within itself. Make sure you're treating her nice. You're talking to her smooth 
beautifully and she understands that this is for her own good so once you've done this for a while the strap will turn the right way around so take out the loop turner and now you're just going to pull the remaining strap within itself that way the wrong side can go inside where she belongs and the right side can come out to shine so once you've done this you will have a pretty strap and that's what she looks like she's so cute yeah a strap can be cute so I'm just snipping off the ends and I did this at a curve that way the strap would look nice and cute and finished and now I'm just going to attach this to my dress so I marked the midpoint at that top bit and then I marked the midpoint of my tie I just used a piece of chalk for this and I'm just going to align those two points pin them in place that way I can easily sew everything together and you're just going to sew a zigzag stitch across the point to the pin and you're basically done so I just made a pretty bow so this is a faux tie but I think it adds to the dress and makes it super cute once your bow is tied off and you're happy with it it's now time to rock your dress as you binge watch Netflix that is a beautiful dress she was a labor of love this dress took me seven hours to make but it was so worth it because she is gorgeous and the fact that this was made from a one dollar shirt dress is honestly the icing on the cake I love this dress so much and I hope you do too I know this is a bit of a lengthy tutorial but I hope all the steps are clear and that you're able to follow along to make your very own dress that we can be quarantine twinsies and we can look good on the couch girl ain't no harm in that anyway that's it from me today thank you so much for watching I thoroughly enjoyed your company in today's video I hope you'll consider joining me for the next one but until then stay safe social distance and remember to mind your business take your water and your vitamins because god knows with 2020 we need all the help we can get anyway see you soon bye